Welcome, friends. Welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Sunday Morning in the Old Cookbook Show. Uh, a few weeks ago, we did a recipe out of this Canadian cookbook, the Laura Secord Canadian Cookbook. First published in 1966 um, as a project for Canada's centennial. We did another recipe out of this book, and I teased a recipe uh, just by reading it called Hamburger Pancakes. And there's a story that goes with this recipe. And the story is... An ingenious homemaker from Saskatchewan shows us how to stretch half a pound of ground beef. Undoubtedly, the recipe is born of necessity, perhaps during the Depression years when Saskatchewan suffered the worst drought in history. Um, great story. Problem is, um, I went back through all of the Canadian cookbooks that I own, and... I can't find any mention of this recipe in any of the Canadian cookbooks from about the mid-1920s until World War II. No mention of this recipe. So my next option is to try um, a couple of online newspaper resources. I find that online newspaper resources really sort of give me a pattern of the emergence of certain recipes. The emergence of a lot of recipes, actually. Um, syndicated recipe columns and the same recipe will show up in these syndicated columns across North America um, all within like a, a two-week period the same recipe will show up in almost every newspaper over that two-week period and then those recipes start showing up later in cookbooks and in the community cookbooks someone saw them in the newspaper clipped it out saved it loved the recipe Nobody else remembers the recipe from the newspaper, and then all of a sudden it becomes great-grandma's personal recipe. And I'm not saying that's what happened here, but that could be what happened here, because the first time I really see this recipe is in a syndicated recipe column in 1959. And the recipe is essentially the same as what we're going to make here, except the one in the, in the, in the, in the newspaper, uh, a little bit more beef, a few more eggs, but everything is treated the same, and the one in the newspaper had uh, chopped up pickled relish. But otherwise, exactly the same recipe. So who knows where it came from? We'll never know. So in this bowl, I've got half a pound of ground beef. To that, I'm going to add onion, baking powder, and salt, and then the yolks of three eggs. And the whites go in the copper bowl because we're going to whip those separately. And the last yolk, now I'm just going to mix this up and we're going to beat the egg whites separately. A few years ago I read a research paper. I should find it again. If I can find it, I'll link to it down below. And it was essentially about deathbed confessions of people who had that... that that perfect family recipe, and everybody was clamoring, clamoring to get the perfect secret family recipe for whatever. And that, you know, mom or dad or grandma confessed on their deathbed that, you know, it was just the recipe from the package, or it was just the recipe on the side of the tin, or from the side of the box, or something they had found in a newspaper, and that it wasn't really all that secret at all. It was just something that they had found and everybody loved it, so they kept it a secret. Um, and, I, and I wonder how many family recipes are that way. I'm, I'm positive that some of the family recipes that I got from my mom or my grandmother are exactly that. They came from the side of the tin. Okay, and now, whipping the egg whites. Okay, I think the egg whites are good, so... Those get mixed into the ground beef. I'll get a uh, I'll get a rubber spatula to get the rest of that out. And the last of the egg. Waste not, want not. Now, before you critique my folding whites into ground beef, I would suggest that you attempt to fold whites into ground beef. <laughs> It's not that easy. So I've got, a, uh, I've got a heavy cast iron pan here, and it's on sort of a medium heat. I'm going to put in some oil. Uh, the recipe says to use an unsalted oil, an unsalted fat. So I guess they mean 
don't use bacon fat and don't use salted butter. Okay, the oil looks like it's hot. And now we drop these by the spoonful like a pancake. Maybe a little rounder? Yep, drop like pancakes onto a hot griddle and turn once. Um, I had expected them to spread out a little more, but they didn't. I don't know whether to smash them down or if just the act of turning them over will, will flatten them out. We'll see. Okay. Ooh. That looks quite nice. Okay, I think they're done. So I'm going to pull them off. I've got lots more to cook, but I'm going to pull the pan off so we can give them a taste. Oh, I arrived just in time then. Hey, Glenn. Hey, hey friends. It's time to taste. Um, you just said so. I could probably do two things at once. <laughs> a little bit more oil. They soaked up quite a bit of oil. Looks like we might need a spoon for chili sauce. Yes. So it says to serve them with a mushroom sauce or a... What does it say? Or with tomato or mushroom sauce. So this is our chill sauce, which is, you know, tomato sauce. Sorry, chili sauce. I was gonna say, we do tend to shorten yeah. the phrase a little so bit. So it's chili sauce, but it has nothing to do with heat or it's it's a sweet tomato pickle. So is this like a, like, I don't understand. Like, is this a burger? Like, what what is this? It's a burger, it's a pancake. It's pancake because it's flat. It's a pancake because it has. Well, you whip the well, egg. Whites. Egg. It's got egg. Yeah. Mhm. Mm okay, that's a little bit weird. Really? The texture's weird. I find the texture weird. No, I, I was thinking it had. It's like a. It's like a meat-based omelet. <laughs> Versus an egg-based yes. omelet that had like a versus an omelet with meat in it. It's like meat with some omelet in it. Yes, it has, <laughs> Does that make sense? It has an omelet texture. That's exactly what that's. Yes, mm -hmm. I couldn't pinpoint it. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know. That I need chili sauce with it. No, per se. Mm. Some toast. Yeah. Okay. So, texture-wise, it took me a while to get my head around it. But now that I think of it as an omelet with as versus a meat being a omelet. burger? As, yeah. Or a pancake. Is there onion in it? There is a little there, bit of I onion. I see that in now, it. yeah. yeah. Um, salt and baking powder. There's no pepper. Now, the first thing that jumps into my mind. Baking powder. Yeah. Don't know. Okay. Um, They'd kind of look fluffy, I guess. First thing that jumps into my mind is make this with minced pork and put poultry seasoning in it. Mmm, no. Well, I can see why you would like that. So it makes it completely into a breakfast sausage omelet. But that's one of those things. That would, I would love that. See, it's funny because I was actually thinking of a completely different thing of how you could make it so it tasted more like a Western. Because my mom happens to really love a Western omelet. Make, a, it, make it into like a Western burger. <laughs> or between two pieces of toast. And yet, you know... <laughs> I don't know that it needs to be. Feels like we're making breakfast really complicated. Okay, so it's a little bit weird. Um, I don't know how well it extends uh, your budget. Um, Adding egg to your. But I mean, as a as a as a weekend brunch type thing where you've got a little bit more time on a, on a Saturday or Sunday morning to make a breakfast. I think this would work out really well for me. There you go. Okay, so um, um, hamburger pancakes. Hmm. Mm hmm. Oh. Good to know. Chili sauce goes well with omelet and egg. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's pretty good. We it's went. It's pretty good. We answered two of them, so we're we're just gonna keep eating. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.